Hello everyone and welcome back to this nanophotonics and plasmonics course. Uh, in today's chapter 7 uh, we're gonna discuss and introduce numerical methods uh, for solving uh, real world electromagnetic problems uh, like uh, electromagnetic scattering or electromagnetic radiation, wave guiding. Uh, these problems do not have any analytical solutions that can be calculated uh, especially for irregular geometries. So uh, therefore in order to solve Max's equations you need to use uh, numerical methods to compute the electric and magnetic field uh, across the, uh, the geometry and the problem domain. So, um, briefly speaking, computational methods were uh, pioneered by Purcell and Penny Baker uh, in 1973. Uh, they used uh, the discrete hyper approximation or DDA that we'll be, uh, we'll be discussing later. Uh, to simulate uh, complex geometries uh, and taking into account retardation effects of the electromagnetic uh, fields. So, computation in the demanding nature of uh, uh, electromagnetic computation uh, is needed to, to predict the far field properties uh, and extension properties of non spherical morphology, and therefore, this has slowed down uh, significantly the, the progress of, of research. Um, so the past two decades um, basically uh, have witnessed a very significant improvement uh, in the understanding and the control uh, of the response of small uh, nanoparticles to the light. Uh, and this is due to the, the fact that uh, computational tools and computational methodologies have been uh, significantly developed uh, during that time frame. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, four different methods uh, that we're uh, going to be introducing uh, in the next slide. Uh, but basically all the methods that uh, you can find out there and that are going to be presented here discretize Maxwell's equations and constitutive relations to calculate both the electric and the, and the magnetic fields. So uh, there are other methods uh, that we're not going to be discussing here that I've just listed here as a uh, more for uh, for your knowledge. So the discontinuous Galakian time domain method, the finite element time domain method, uh, the uh, multiple multiple uh, moment method, the method of moments, sc multiple scattering method, uh, and the, the dyadic uh, green function uh, technique. Uh, these are very powerful techniques that are not discussed here, and they, they are uh, available out there uh, in uh, in different forms, open sources or commercial packages. So uh, the four methods we're going to be discussing, uh, and all those methods that uh, I've just mentioned, can be basically sorted out uh, in four different families that I've highlighted at the, uh, at the at the bottom here. Uh, so basically, if you start from Maxwell's equations, you can solve either differential form of Max's equations or even the, the integral form of Max's equations. And for each of these, uh, you can look at the equations in the frequency domain or in the time domain. So as a function of uh, the frequency uh, variable omega or the time evolution of the, the, the fields. So these are the four methods uh, that we're gonna be discussing. Uh, they're also Max's equations, discretize space and time in different ways. Uh, we're gonna be discussing at the end of the presentation uh, the, the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, each of this method. Uh, so let's start with the, the first one, the discrete dipole approximation, which is uh, introduced, uh, which was introduced by Persson and Penny Baker in 1973. So it's a fairly old method. That's originally one of the first one, uh, but it was really popularized by uh, Dwayne and Flado in the, in the early 90s with their uh, DDSCAT open source package. So the, the method is, uh, is very simple. It just approximates uh, it approximates the the geometry uh, and the, the the object using a finite point array, where each point in space is actually associated with uh, a simple electric dipole moment. So each dipole moment, uh, the, each point in space, uh, is basically calculated using the probability of the medium at that particular point using the electric field uh, incident on the, the object, so this is the optical excitation, and taking into account the response of all the other uh, point dipoles in, uh, in, the, in the object. So the, the scattering problem is really solved self-consistently. Uh, each time you calculate the, the dipole position, the dipole moment at a given position, you take into account uh, the dipole moments and the other positions, and 
and so forth and to solve this stuff consistently. So the wave equations are really transformed to, to volume integrals in the end using the green formalism. Uh, you can calculate the, the cross sections, the optical cross sections, uh, extensions, absorption, and scattering uh, in DDA, and calculate the far field response as well as the near field response, uh, which is, uh, for instance, shown as a couple of examples here for gold disks array and uh, those kind of uh, dendrites uh, made of gold. So, this, the second method we're going to be uh, introducing briefly, uh, the finite difference time domain method, has been introduced in uh, 1980 by Tafloff uh, and has been really popularized uh, in the recent years uh, with the, uh, the introduction of a commercial package, Lumerical FDTD Solutions, which has really made uh, accessible this method to a large number of, uh, of uh, researchers uh, across, the, across the, the, the field of nanophotonics. Mm, this method really discretized the uh, matrix equations both in time and space, as the name uh, suggests, time domain. Uh, this method solves a temporal form of matrix equations. So when you look at the, uh, the, the curl equations that are, that are solved, you have the, the curl of the magnetic field and the curl of the electric field that uh, contain the, the special derivative, and then you have the time derivative of the electric displacements and the magnetic uh, induction. And you just solve those, those derivatives by finite differences. So this is really an approximation of the, the, the derivative uh, for uh, numerical uh, implementations. And you can just rewrite the equations uh, in a very discrete, uh, discrete form. So uh, they are uh, two-shifted spatial and, uh, and temporal uh, grid uh, for electric and magnetic fields called the E-cells. So we're not going to be discussing the, the technical aspect of the E cells, but this is the, the concept, the key concept uh, of the uh, this FDTD method. So you can also calculate both the far field response or the spectra. Uh, you can calculate the in, in this case the, the scattering. You can calculate the surface charge distribution induced by the, uh, the optical field, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is very powerful technique uh, to solve a temporal uh, form of Maxwell's equations. The third method, uh, the boundary element method, also very popular, has been introduced uh, in the late 90s uh, for, uh, for electromagnetic purposes. Uh, and it's uh, also available in a variety of, of packages. The, the most uh, recent open source package, uh, MNPBM, has been introduced by uh, Trugler and uh, Oenester. Uh, so Trugler uh, is the one of the is the author of the one of the textbooks uh, that I've uh, suggested at the beginning of the course, and basically it's just based on the Green, Gauss, and Stokes theorems. So it allows the the, the reduction from volume differential equations, uh, and the, or the just the Elmhurst equations, uh, to boundary integral equations. So where you have really uh, surface charges, uh, and just solve the surface charges. Uh, and currents uh, rather than uh, than the electric and magnetic fields, and then you just use the potentials. Uh, so you have the expression of the, the, the scalar potential and the vector potential here. Uh, you can recognize the green tensor here with the surface uh, surface uh, surface charges and here and the surface currents, and you can just solve those uh, those equations uh, to to calculate the, the potentials. Once you have the potentials. Uh, you can loop that back uh, in order to extract and calculate the electric and magnetic fields. So once again, you can express the, the cross sections, uh, optical cross sections for this uh, for this method. So you see that they have different expressions than uh, than DDA, but uh, you can calculate those cross sections based on the electric and magnetic fields. Uh, you can calculate this, uh, the far field response, uh, like on the left here, uh, near field response on the right. Very, uh, very simply. Uh, the final method, uh, which is also very, uh, very powerful, very popular, uh, finite element method. So the finite element method is a, a very versatile method, which is used for multiphysics. So the, the, the main package that uh, you can find comes from multiphysics uh, is really, uh, as the name indicates, multiphysics. So you can solve, you can use this method to solve all sorts of problems, physical problems in uh, which are just making use of differential equations, so from heat transfer equations to acoustics to electromagnetics. 
So in this case, we focus on electromagnetics uh, and it solves just the partial differential equations uh, by creating equations that approximate uh, the, the partial differential equation to be studied. So basically we just break down the entire volume of the, the problem into smaller, uh, smaller elements. So you really break down the, the complexity and then you use local functionals. Functionals are just function of functions. So in this case, it's a function of the electric field uh, and you can just calculate, uh, you can just solve the problem using those local functionals. So this is really equivalent to solving the wet entire wave equation and the, the boundary conditions. So instead of using a set of two equations, you use this functional uh, in, instead of using the entire simulation domain, the entire volume, you just basically uh, break down the, uh, the problem into a smaller, uh, smaller volume. So this is a finite element. And then each element is basically uh, brought together. So each solution uh, of this functional uh, within each element is basically then stitched up uh, together with the others to form the, the general solutions of the entire problem. So um, in the end, you can still also calculate uh, both far field, uh, far field response of a, of a given object, the near field response. Uh, so uh, each of this method is really uh, unique in its, in its approach, but ultimately they all calculate the same thing, electric fields and magnetic fields, far field and near field properties. So if you compare them, um, um, well, no, no method is, uh, is perfect. Uh, you have advantages of, uh, for each of these methods. You have disadvantages for these methods as well. So I'm trying to list here a few major uh, key points for each of these uh, this methods, uh, just as a summary. There's some methods are really good for handling uh, complex geometries uh, because of the, the, the way it discretizes the, the, the geometry. But on the other end, uh, they become time consuming because what well, you have to discretize uh, the entire uh, the entire object with uh, with very uh, very small point dipoles, and you really have uh, to to compute this more as an approximation. So this is also uh, one of the disadvantages of this DDM method. Uh, some of the other ones like the boundary and method, uh, you can see that it's uh, basically a two D two D discretization of the surface because you only solve uh, the problem for surface currents and charges. So you have only take care of only of the, the surface of the object and not the volume uh, as, as opposed to the DDA or, or FDTD. Um, but uh, this is very powerful. Uh, however, because it uses uh, those symmetries, uh, it's also uh, very dense and asymmetric uh, matrices that you have to, to invert uh, to solve the problem when you actually uh, deal with uh, the green tensor uh, formalism. Um, FDTD, for instance, one of the, the drawbacks is that it requires this 3D meshing for the entire simulation domain, so it can be extremely time consuming. Uh, but on the other hand, it's really easy to parallelize. Uh, so uh, time consuming, yes. Uh, whether it depends on, uh, on the system you actually run the, the, the simulations on, uh, which can be very powerful as well. Uh, it can also deal with nonlinear, uh, inhomogeneous problems, so which is which is very, very, uh, very useful for complex, uh, complex systems. So these are just a, a few, uh, a few uh, pros and cons uh, of the, the methods. Uh, you can also compare uh, computation need uh, versus the storage. Uh, so some of them are uh, very computationally demanding. Uh, like, for instance, DDA, see that it scales with the, the cube of the volume of the object, uh, where BEM scores only with the square because you have only the surface. Um, some of them, like FEM and FDTD, scales with the volume of the simulation domain, not just the object. So uh, that's something which is also very different than the DA and BEM, which are just the volume of the, the object itself. Your frequency domain, uh, like uh, DDA, FEM, and BEM, you really have to, to look at how many frequency points you're actually calculating. If you want to calculate the spectrum, for instance, that becomes very, very time consuming. If you have very large spectral, um, spectral range where you want to calculate the response, uh, where DDA, uh, where FDTD is a time domain method, so basically it scales up only with the, uh, uh, with the time not the uh, not the frequency points um, 
another way to compare uh, those methods uh, is to look at the type of physical problem you actually want to solve. If you're interested in uh, propagation of the electromagnetic fields, or if you're interested in the more localized nature of the electric fields, so uh, localized electromagnetic fields near the structure, uh, or a more scattering uh, open problem, uh, some of the methods are better than others. Um, so for instance, if you take uh, DDA, which is this, uh, this method here, it's a volume integral uh, equation method, uh, it's very good for a scattering problem, and that's why it, it was introduced by uh, Joel and Flado for scattering of uh, light in space by dust, uh, dust particles. So this is a very good for, for scattering problem, but not so much when you want to look for uh, propagation, for instance, or localization of fields. On the other end, FDTD, for instance, is very good for, for propagation. So this is good for wave guiding applications. If you want to observe wave guides, FDTD, for instance, is very, is very good because you have the time domain evolution, the time evolution of the electromagnetic fields. Uh, FEM is a bit more versatile. It's good for propagation and localization. Uh, but because of the, the nature of the method and you have to, to, to look at a, a closed uh, simulation domain, it's not, not so good for, for scattering. So it's still good. It provides a good... A good thing, and this is just, for instance, a comparison uh, of uh, just a gold nanoparticle, and look at the scattering cross section uh, of this gold nanoparticle using both me theory, which is the analytical uh, solution, DTD, BEM, and DDA. Uh, so you see that they provide the exact same solution. So uh, it's less uh, less reliable, uh, but still uh, with enough resources, enough time, enough convergence, you can still obtain. Uh, very good, uh, very good result, and very, uh, very close to what you could expect from uh, a pure uh, analytical response. So, just to, to wrap up, uh, this is just a summary of the key points we've uh, we've discussed. Uh, the four main, uh, four major methods that are used to solve electromagnetic problems uh, in nanophotonics and plasmonics: uh, DDA, FDTD, BEM, and FEM. Uh, so i uh, just broken down here by type of method, so frequency domain versus time domain, uh, what type of um, type of the Maxwell's equations form they are solving, integral versus differential equations, uh, and uh, how is actually the discretization of the geometry and the simulation domain. Um, so with this, uh, um, that concludes this uh, chapter, uh, chapter 7 on numerical methods.